Hey guys, Nugs B here, and I just want to give a big thanks to the sponsors of For the Record, hashtag TogetherFTR. And the first one I want to give a thanks to today is Advanaclean of the Tri-State. Advanaclean of the Tri-State provides essential indoor air quality services to residential and commercial customers. They specialize in things like mold removal, water damage, dryer vent cleaning, and air duct cleaning. You can give them a call at 606-331-5001. And they do free estimates, so just give my buddy Joel a call, and he'll be right there for you whenever he can. He'll get you scheduled in. Uh, Their address is 4446 13th Street, Ashland KY. So if you need to stop in and uh, holler at him about something, just go on in. And this lovely establishment is ran by Joel and Pam Dooley. And these are great people. Like I said, get in contact with them. They'll do some free estimates for you, uh, get you all the way together, guys. And uh, you can also go check them out on Facebook at Advanta Clean of the Tri-State. And go be sure to give them a like. Go be sure to share their page and share it with your friends. And their website is www.advanaclean.com. Dot com slash Ashland dash KY. Another sponsor for today is my boy John Cannon at Straight Out of Makeup in the Hillbilly Flea Market. Not only does he have makeup at low prices, but this man is the fire stick king. I got to give it up. He's always taking great care of me. Uh, his are guaranteed with uh, free cable, Netflix, Hulu, NFL, movies and theaters, and more. I personally have one, like I said, and it's pretty great, to be honest. Uh, Go see him and tell him I sent you. But in the meantime, go like and share his page. You can go to www.facebook.com slash straight out of makeup. Or you can just search on Facebook, straight out of makeup. And uh, like I said, he's at the the Hillbilly Flea Market. So the address is 227 Russell Road. Booth 45, opposite end of Spectrum. So when you pull in, he's going to, you know, you pull around, you go to the other end, opposite of Spectrum, he'll be the first booth as soon as you walk in. A lot of great stuff, guys. Go check my guy out. He's killing the game. Uh, The phone number, 606-465-8296. So once again, big thanks to the sponsors. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Let's go ahead and get into this episode. It's for the record, son. Yeah. Yeah. It's for the. It's for the record. I said it's for the. It's for the record. Yeah, boy. It's for the. It's for the record. And we all are. We all together. I said we What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Nugs B, coming to you with episode 34 of For the Record, hashtag together FTR, and I'm joined by the magical DJ Wilson. You already know we in the house, baby. How you doing tonight? I'm doing great and definitely magical. Magical, son. I'll tell you that right now. Gotta keep it magical. <laughs> and we're gonna start this day off, this episode, I don't even know why I said day, I'm over here tripping, listen it's to me. It's a full day. <laughs> it's been a full day, my friend. Uh, so we're gonna start this episode off with entertainment history as usual. So today, August 22nd in 2012, rap star LL Cool J hears his alarm go off in his Los Angeles home and rushes downstairs to confront an alleged burglar named Jonathan Kirby. One broken nose, jaw, and rib later, Cool J has uh, subdued the intruder and police are on their way to take the suspect into custody. No word on whether LL quoted one of his own songs, Mama Said Knock You Out, during the altercation. Wow. So this is, he, this is, this is a conspiracy. Now, did he, in <laughs> fact, knock him out, or was it just broken ribs? I mean, because we can't go full-on quote unless he actually knocked somebody out. It didn't say that he knocked uh, this gentleman out, but I'm going to assume with the way he's built, 
This gentleman, yeah. I mean, he's, yeah. he's got his arms are size of gallons of milk, bro. Right, right. This is right. serious. I mean, yeah. this is crazy. Shout out to LL Cool J. Bro. Shout out, LL. Love him. All your success. Been Love a fan him. for a long time. And uh, also, August 22nd, 1986, the movie Stand By Me is released in theaters. One of my favorite movies, to be honest, bro. Actually, Top yes. 20. It's one of my go-tos. Top 20, bro, for sure. It immediately reminds me of childhood. And then we got August 22nd, 1967. Lane Staley of Alice in Chains is born in Washington State. And also, August 22nd, 1966, Wu-Tang Clan rapper Jizza, a.k.a. The, Geni- uh, the Genius, is born Gary Grice. Wow. Two great birthdays, man. Lane Happy birthday. Staley. Happy birthday to those animals. Yes, yes. They said when they found uh, Lane Staley dead, he was like 87 pounds. Wow. Literally. Such, I mean, such a wow. horrific way to live as, uh, you know, rock stars tend to do. Um, but, yeah, hey. he uh, he was like 80-some pounds whenever they found him. And the only reason they found him is because the accountant of Alice in Chains hit up the band and was like, hey, this guy hasn't came by in like two weeks to get money and hasn't sent for no money. We might want to check on him. Wow. And they went and found him. He had, uh, you know, overdosed and wow. uh, died. Well, he was man. young, too, bro. He wasn't really that old when he died. Um, and if you watch the MTV Unplugged of Alice in Chains, dude, you can just tell he's tore down. Like, he's got the shades on. On he another just, level. He looks On sickly. another level. You know, like, seriously, man. <laughs> but happy birthday to Lane Staley and uh, Jizza of the Wu-Tang Clan. Also, got some facts of the day for you all, my friends. Uh... When Neptune and Earth line up on the same side of the sun at their closest, they're only 2.7 billion miles, which is 4.3 billion kilometers, apart. But when the planets are on opposite sides of the sun, they can put as many as 2.9 billion miles, which is 4.7 billion kilometers, between them. Wow. Dude, that's far. So crazy, man. Wow, yeah. Yeah. I love doing the science facts of the day just because, like, I'm so dumb when it comes to science and I love learning new stuff well, about science, you know? I mean, it immediately lets you know how small we are. I mean, perspective. You know, yeah, perspective, you gotta, my friend. <laughs> it really does. Yes, You're absolutely right. Yes. That's, a val- that's a great valid point. It literally lets you know how insi- insignificant you right, really right. are. Like, you know, I mean, this is true. We're doing a lot on our planet, but, you know. For sure. But. <laughs> <laughs> We're just a speck. Yeah, my we're, we're doing a lot. Like, we're just we're right. that dot over there. <laughs> For you know that real, dot. No lie. Uh, in 1813, the United States gets its, gets its nickname Uncle Sam. The name is linked to Samuel Wilson, a meat packer from Troy, New York, who supplied barrels of beef to the United States Army during the War of 1812. Samuel Wilson, huh? Didn't know that until today. I didn't know no. either of these things until today. No. Actually, I was uh, scanning through a couple different uh, articles or whatever. Uh, just trying to find something right. cool to, you know, let the people know what's up. A little fact of the day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I came across these, and I, I've read some other ones that were cool, too. But these were the ones that stuck out to me. And right. I was like, dude, these right. are awesome. I really like them. Oh, yeah. Fun facts. I Fun mean. facts, my friend. Also, <laughs> I want to take a second and let you guys know that uh, I just got my uh, new graphic back. Shout out to Andy Art, who did that for me. Uh, you guys can go buy the T-shirts and the tank tops right now on www.togetherftr.com. And uh, if you need like a bigger size or if you want a specific color, I can go back through and design and then post it and, and let you know. And you can just, you know, whatever you guys want. Uh, you want to get a fanny pack because you're feeling 80s style. <laughs> the mullet's coming back, bro. So uh, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. about time for me to get a mohawk mullet it, Yeah, you with definitely dreads. need to be business <laughs> in the front, okay? Whatever's <laughs> going on in the back is you, okay? It's, it's, it's all, but it's, it needs to be business in the front. <laughs> it has to be business, bro. <laughs> all business. Very professional-like. Yeah. Um, but not like I was saying, though, uh, if you guys want to get a fanny pack because that's how you roll, I don't judge people, so I will make that for you. Uh, you can get it delivered to your house. You don't have to go nowhere to rock that fanny pack, bro. Oh, wow. You can get it all the way together. This is real. You're going to be together on something <laughs> if you're rocking your fanny pack. I mean, people are going to know you're serious because they're going to be like, man, this dude's serious. I Look, think he's got a fanny pack on. Very serious. Yeah, I'm not playing pack. with him. <laughs> and also I wanted to announce that It Chapter 2 will be coming out September 6th. And just a reminder as well, on the episode before last, 
maybe it was two, three episodes ago. Um, I told you all that September 7th, Dustin Poirier and Khabib, I don't know how to say his last name, and I don't want to butcher it, so I'm mm. not going to say it, uh, but they're still fighting September 7th. I believe it's still in Dubai, but you know the UFC, they change things a lot. And right. They right. mix stuff up, you know. Um, <laughs> On the fly. But September 7th, dude, if you guys don't have the pay-per-view ready or if you don't have a fire stick or something, you got to make sure you see this fight because it's going to be awesome, dude. Super awesome. And Khabib, like, I don't know if you watched any of his fights. I'm sure you watched the Conor McGregor one, of right, course. Yes, Everybody yes. saw that. And I told people, I was like, look, you really think that a striker is going to beat a grappler? You have to be not, you, you're not knowledgeable when it comes to fighting. Because a grappler, nine times out of ten, is more than likely going to win from what I've seen. You, you do you have, have a seen. very strong point. You do have a very strong point. It's It's important. It's very to have that set of skills. Your takedown defense and offense yes. is crucial to how winded yes. you get, how winded you can make somebody. I mean, dude, that's why most people lose fights is because they get gassed I mean, out. They, a lot they, of they people, lose their breath. You know, a lot of people, you know, having a good cardio is, is, is okay, but, you know, there's also the stamina is different than having, like, jujitsu stamina. Very true. You know, very true. A friend of mine. It really is. He, he's been doing it for years. I mean, he just talks about different things like that. People don't understand. You have to have that kind of. You got to be patient. You got to, you got to breathe in the middle. Think when, when you're when you're laying there, and you're grappling. There's mm-hmm. a lot of times you can get you some wind. You know, you have you have a second different techniques. You it just, really is. It, that's very important. Or you're not going to last long. No, breathing is is detrimental in a fight. So, in my opinion, I'm typically going to take a grappler because they usually always go to the ground. Not always, but right. typically they're right. going to go to the ground. And I don't really like watching grappling. I like the striking fighters. I love them. Uh, it's just kind of like I like violence as every human does. We're I've, all, I've been you know, to several jiu-jitsu matches. I mean, it's, it's, it's exciting to me yeah. either way. You know. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're all pretty sweet, but I mean... With the human cockfight of UFC, it's just it's it's hard to beat that type of violence. Right. You know, yeah. like it's hard to top. Like that's I why mean, boxing is a thing of the past. Like, well, you want something. I mean, people nowadays want something more exciting than two dudes jumping around in a ring. Yeah. and, and throwing punches. They want. They want to see you get they slammed. See slammed. Get they picked see, up. You know, or get bull whipped yeah, onto the different. octagon. You know, <laughs> like. I mean, everyone watches Mayweather, but at yeah. a certain point, you're just going to see him dancing around. And, boxing you know, is he a, understands the sport of boxing, so it's he's not going to be beat. You know, that is understands. exactly what he it is, too, my friend. One hundred percent. And the rules and regulations are so much different. Yeah. I mean, once you understand, you know, all you got to do is get up there and not get hit. I mean, keep you can't, your distance. If they're not hitting you, they can't win. Distance you is know, a defense great is thing. Crucial, you know? It really is, man. Being a defensive fighter in boxing 100% right, is Right, He doesn't get hit game. a lot. No. So he wins every time. He's he's beating you with the stamina. He's right. also beating you with the not getting hit and hitting yes. you in the in the yes. same little, you know, very uh, knowledgeable move. the point system. Yeah. And he every every 3 minutes it's mm-hmm. calculated to him. It's and calculated to him. 100%. He's already, yeah, he's already gone through it. And that's know? the difference with that in UFC because, yes, they are, you know, they count points in UFC mm-hmm. as well. But at the same time, you're going to see a lot more knockouts in UFC because you're doing a lot of different things. If you right. throw Muay Thai clinch, dude, that's mm-hmm. a deadly grap, uh, grapple. And you know what I mean? Like, that's a deadly. The, the Muay Thai clinch is deadly, man. Elbows and knees. I mean, it's just exciting to have that many different forms of martial arts it really is in, man it's great one ring you know it really so is it's exciting it really is man but yeah for those of you who don't know september 7th dustin poirier and khabib will be fighting in dubai i don't know who else is on that card but i'm pretty sure it's a pretty stacked card last time i checked it uh the last pay-per-view fight was pretty good too man i don't know if you got to check it out and i recently just got back into ufc man i didn't watch it for years really uh, I used to watch it with my dad forever ago, and then I, you know, I just, I don't know, I kind of, you know, I started making music, and right, like, right. you know, life happened, you know, I got two kids, yada yada, got a job, all that crap. A whole different set of priorities. Exactly. So, like, I kind of just got away from it. But about three months ago, maybe four tops, I just started watching it again, man, and like, I saw John Jones, and like, just yeah, how powerful yeah. he was, like, yes. slamming people around. Like, yes. he starts from like a, 
like crouching, like I don't even know. It looks like a stretch when he starts his <laughs> fights, dude. And it's so intense. Like I wouldn't know what to do if somebody was coming at me like that. It, it'd be rough. You, it really you, gotta, is. you gotta make decisions like, and you gotta make them now. It's already intimidating. Yeah. Like you're already intimidating me from the beginning. You friend. better go like, with your decisions. And he's right? so fast yeah. and, and his power is just oh man. He's a beast, yeah. dude. Gotta give it yeah. up to him. On every level, yes. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get right into it, guys. So, first thing we're going to talk about today is my man's business. And uh, he's going to go ahead and break down some things for you all, let you all know, you know, a little bit about himself and how things are going, where things are going to be, uh, where you can locate him, you know, all that great stuff. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and let you take it off, man. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, my business is Underdog Mobile Food Truck. Uh, here recently in 2017 we set up a lot at the uh, dollar general in ironton ohio right off the bridge the russell right, bridge yeah. right there as soon as you get off you can't miss yeah. it we had a pretty good start you know people like us oh yeah we, absolutely we, dude uh when did you guys start what was last was 2017 the first year on the lot it was our first year on the dollar general lot yes okay. uh we had done a few shows and festivals sure. in 2016 late 2016 yeah, yeah. so getting a start up you yes, know yes yeah. that's awesome man. that was a uh, when I first purchased my truck. Yeah. So we got, awesome. we got to do a few events that year. Then it got cold. So we, we came back out. Got to pack up. Got to pack up. Yeah. And then, you, you know, you build for the spring because everybody's yeah. out, you know, yeah. having a good time, you know, doing yeah. whatever. Uh, so let me ask you this, man. So in the next maybe five years, what's a couple goals you have and a couple, you know, expansion things or whatever you're thinking about in your head? Like, what do you got for the next five years? Oh, we're definitely – down for expansion. Yeah. You know, a realistic goal is to have a, a second truck, a bigger truck in the next five years. Absolutely. Uh, and to travel more. Honestly. That'd be great. The traveling go down is south, definitely. Go out west a little bit. You yeah. Know? Just, definitely where it's at. You know, the festivals, you got. Uh, uh, you know, different uh, events that might be, you know, whatever, and they, right, they offer right. vending and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it, it really is, man. Like, there's some really cool. Uh, st- you know, success stories of people just, mm-hmm. you know, a guy and his old lady, you know, just right. packing up and leaving and going that's what, out west, you that's know. That's what like, we want to try to do, but, yeah. you know, I want to be more realistic. I want to be prepared for whatever they can throw because, at us, you know. Because, you know, with all businesses, you and I and, everybody, and you know, who, anybody who's been in business, you know there's room to fail. And if yes. you fail, you have to have the contingency plan yes. to bounce back, yes. especially when you're – really betting on yourself, you know, mm-hmm. like getting a loan, a business loan or whatever it may be, you know, every uh, circumstance is very specific to an individual, but right. at the same time, it's kind of the same game, you know, mm-hmm. like it could fail with anybody, dude, yeah, good, yeah. good entrepreneurs fail. They I, do. I was fortunate enough to start up with my own money. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't have the stress of paying a bank. Back, dude, that's so. a big one. Yeah. Having the capital yeah. helps mm-hmm. tremendously when doing a business, and I'm not, I'm no guru, you know. Like I, <laughs> yeah. I'm just uh, another guy. I'm a moron. I know well, this, but like I know a couple things, and from what people have told me who own small businesses, friends that I have, yeah. you know, uh, you know, and such, have told me that you got to have room for fail. You know, you got to kind of mm. make sure you know if you do fail, you got something in place that will bring you back. Right. It's it's not something that. You just want to talk about all the time, but you you don't want to manifest to prepare it. yourself. You don't want to manifest it. That's one hundred percent. But and you know, uh, just in the beginning, I feel like just building that plan. You know, you, it, it, you have to be ready. I mean, you, do. and you don't. If you fail, you have to bounce back. One hundred percent. You have to bounce back. One hundred percent. Do you think maybe once you get the second truck, that you might want to do a commercial location? Uh, maybe stay in a stationary one as well. Well, we've uh, we've had some experience in stationary it, yeah it didn't quite work out like we'd hoped of course yeah so, sometimes you know things happen you know right now we're going to keep it mobile that's hey that's great dude you know, whatever works you know the the plan is to always have a stationary spot one spot exactly you know, a but, hub you know a central like has, you know hub it has to be the right spot for you yeah. and your people and very if it's true. not then you know that's very true <laughs> it really is and that's awesome man and uh so what are you thinking are you thinking before winter, are you going to be back on the lot, or are you going to wait until next year? Uh, we have hopes of that. We, uh, okay. I'm getting the, some body work done on my box truck. I'm awesome. going to get rid of the yellow paint. And, sure, and yeah. Get some graphic design on there, of get course. Get it nice. And, get it nice, baby. As well as the food truck. And, oh, yeah. You know, 
we fix some plumbing in our food truck. We gotta fix a few gas lines, and yeah. you know, we want to we want to be out right. You know, we yeah, be absolutely. Out right. We're absolutely. gonna look a lot better when we get back out there. Absolutely. And, and uh, it, for those of you who are not aware, you can go on Facebook right now. Let me pull up the actual link, but you could probably just search Underdog and it will pop up. It's uh, under D A W G, like yes. Cleveland. Shout out my team, you know, Dog right, Pound. Right, hey, right. baby, we about to be out Similar here. Similar to the dog. We about to be out here. Hey, <laughs> we're taking the division this year. The only people we got to worry about is Pittsburgh, but it's all right, baby. We're going to hold it down, and Cleveland's going to be out here. We, we are real contenders since the 1950s. So I feel good about this, yes. bro. <laughs> like, I'm happy for you in the Cleveland Browns. We, we might man. make it to the playoffs, man. Like, mm-hmm. this is real. It's real. It's crazy, man. And to think, you know, uh, I was talking to one of my friends. He was like, uh, you, well, I mean, you know, he didn't know that I was a Cleveland fan. He was like, oh, yeah, you, you know. Uh, you know, he thought I was hopping on the bandwagon. I was like, son, I've been I've been here since Tim Couch days. Well, I've been a loser my whole life. I've Ever got, since I've, I've been born, I've just been losing, bro. I'm, I'm used to yeah, it now. I've got friends that are Cleveland fans, and I offered to go to a game with them this year. So, Dude, I mean, that's going to be awesome. It, I think it'll be exciting. Are you going to go, like, when they play Cincy, or are you going to go, like, to Cleveland? I'm not for sure. Right on. Because yeah. I was thinking about Ultimately, maybe. Ultimately, I'm a Raiders fan, so yeah, that's I have a long, to worry about their schedule yeah. first. Yeah, I don't know so. if they play, uh, if Cleveland played them at home. I don't even know if they play them. No. They don't play no. Oakland. If they do, it would be in Oakland. whatever home stadium Oakland's going to be in. <laughs> oh, yeah, in Las Vegas. Their, yeah, theirs is not going to be done. Until next to the following season. Okay, so the actual link on Facebook is www.facebook.com underdog mobile food truck. So go check my dudes out. Let them yeah. know you stopped by. Drop a review. Take a look. Hit them with a, a share, you know. Uh, show them some love for sure. Yeah. And like I said, so we're hoping to be, you know, back on the lot by uh, before winter hits and stuff. Yes. That if would, not, that's a early spring. Goal. Yes. You know, so. Absolutely. And, you know, they'll keep you updated on uh, mm-hmm. their Facebook. So, like I said, just go give them a like. Check them out. Be sure to share as well. Yeah. And uh, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm pumped myself, man, because, yeah. you know, you know, you always got me, yeah. baby. I love eating. You know, that, that's my jam. Yeah, we're, we're coming out strong. We're going to be colorful. We're going to be very colorful. We're going to be bright and loud. Dude, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm really pumped, man. I cannot wait. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be great. Good food, good food. 100%, guys. And you can see all the pictures on there as well. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, we're also, you know, we might whenever, you know, things get back rolling on the, uh, you know, when they get back on the lot and stuff, uh, we might be going out and being live. You know, we might go live out there and talk to some people. That's and, a great you know, idea. You know, do some, I would you know, very much love that. That'd be awesome, mm-hmm. you know, come out and, you know, let some people come on and, you know, talk about yeah. their experience and get some pictures with, you know, the merch and everything and everything yeah. that's going on. Well, I can you tell know? you right now, underdog customers are the very best that there is. You Believe know. that. Believe excellent. that, my friend. They wake up in the morning and it's excellent. So <laughs> that's what an underdog customer is going to tell you. 100%. So the next thing uh, we're going to get on to today is how big and how explosive Fortnite came onto the video game scene. Oh, wow. Dude, this is crazy. Now now you're talking. This is crazy, dude. So let me just go ahead and be clear. (laughs) My man actually showed me the ropes on Fortnite when I (laughs) was a noob. I was scrubbing, came through, showed me love. Didn't even get mad at me that I sucked. No. You know, I felt welcomed. You know, Kev as well. Shout out to him (laughs) because he showed me love. Shout Shout out to Jermaine. And Alex, you know, you guys oh, showed wow. me love. You were, you know, not trying to like, you know, hey, man, you suck. You can't play with us, bro. You can't be on our team if you ain't getting killed. Because yeah. I was trash for a long time, bro. We weren't secretly saying, oh, man, not Nugs B again, man. Are you serious? We, this can't, dude, do, we can't deal with this man. kid. We're tell, done with tell him. him our internet's messed up. <laughs> tell him our internet. No, we didn't do none of that. We, we got dial up, man. We, we don't know oh, what to man, do. Man. The dial tone. You hear the dial tone? Oh, it's over. It's over. Oh, I got to use a landline, man. Going so I can't a play tunnel. tonight. Nuts. We're going through a tunnel right now, so just bear with us. So, yeah, I want to be clear on that. You know, they showed me the ropes or whatever. Uh, and, like, straight up, man, I did not think that Fortnite was going to be as big as it is. Because I started playing on season like two or three, maybe somewhere around yeah, there. A long time ago. And, uh, and it's been a minute. I mean, seriously, like, season from 10 the right beginning. Now. It's season 10? Season 10 oh, right now. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, life has happened, unfortunately, for me, and things have came up. I've been real busy. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I have been spending a lot of my time watching The 100 because, you know, 
Wow. I'm, uh, that's just who I am, you know. I heard I, that was I, a great show. Dude, you got to check it out. It is killer. Mm-hmm. I've been recommending it to everybody, man. It's oh. seriously really good. And, like, it's on the CW, so it's kind of corny. You know, you got that cable TV well, corny yeah, to it. Yeah, the CW is specializes in corny. Straight so. up, bro. But at the same time, it literally can hold a candle up to premium <laughs> channel stuff. Like, it's good, man. Like like I said, you get your corny drama and whatever, but, like, the story is brilliant. It's actually based off a book. Uh, so, essentially, wow. like, it's, uh, you know, the Earth was under an apocalypse, you know, so people had to leave and go to space. So they stay up in space for 97 years. And uh, so what happens... 97 years. Yeah, bro, 97 years is how long they're in space. They haven't came back down. So in space, things are different. Let's say... You know, you like there's rules, but the rules work like if you break them, you die. We float you into space. So let's say that you're only supposed to have one kid. So if you have a second kid, you're floated. You're done. We're, we're done with you. We're not wasting resources on people oh, who don't man. listen. You, you're just done. Just float. You're, you're in done. Space. They That's just you. done. You're out, bro. And oh, then, no, uh, so know. if you're a juvenile, you go to the lockup and then you wait until you're 18 to be reviewed. So if you're a juvenile and you do something, boom, we just lock you up. It's over for you. We ain't going to kill you. But long story short, so they take 100 of the juveniles who are in lockup, who are about to be 18. Some of them are younger, whatever. uh, And they send them down to Earth to see if it's habitable because they're running out of resources on – it's called the Ark. It's where they live (laughs) in space. So they're running out of resources. So they're like, boom, we can do a little population control, and we can see if it's habitable. Boom, we're going to send these children down here. So the kids get down here, and it just starts getting crazy. It's just things are weird. Uh, you know, there are people who never left, who didn't go to space, who stayed here and, you know, survived. They obviously got some problems. Then, it, right? well, so got- <clears throat> well, here's the thing. Not everybody. Some people, they just adapted, you know, and, and evolution took over or whatever. You know, I mean, it's not far enough for evolution, but you know what I mean. Like, they adapted to the environment. Hmm. But some things, like, you, you, you know, you were getting at. Uh, it's a little weird. Some funky things happen. You yeah. see some, you know, radiation, dude. It, yeah. it can mess people up. Definitely uh, funky. But I definitely recommend everybody go check out check out the 100. I literally just finished um, the uh, like uh, not series, but the season uh, finale of the most recent season. So I'm caught up now. <laughs> uh, and I'll go ahead and tell you, bro. Like before you start watching it, it's it's a Game of Thrones, bro. They will kill your favorite character off the rip. You'll, get, you'll like somebody, boom, dead. Gone. We don't like you, bro. Oh, Done. Oh, man, I'm not going to be able to keep up. Dude, it's crazy, seriously. I lose interest right now when my people are dead. Are you dead? You did that to him? Seriously? <laughs> that I'm is out. hilarious, man. Uh, but it's really good, man. I also started watching uh, Yellowstone today, too. One of my friends recommended it to me. Uh, it, it was good, man. It's got Kevin Costner Kevin in Costner, it. Yes. Yeah, it's good, man. I watched the first episode. I'm going to check uh, check it out and, you know, and finish it up. It's only two seasons, so pretty quick hmm. watch. Okay. Um, so yeah, back to Fortnite. I got off topic. Uh, anyways, so it's so crazy to think that a free game has literally grossed more than games that were paid into, or you have to pay for, like in games that were invested millions into. I'm gonna tell you this right now. I spent money buying games <laughs> such as Call of Duty. Yeah. But uh, the free game I've downloaded Fortnite, I've spent more money on that They've game got you. than I and ever that, have that, on that's any how, other game. Dude, that is ever. brilliant. Brilliant, dude. I'm yeah. going to give you the game for free, but I want you to get this cool stuff. Yeah, I get the, the little $10 <laughs> PlayStation cards. Yeah, Getting the little skins, clerks at bro. Speedway get tired of seeing me. I'm like, when's a $10 card going to be in, ma'am? They're like, excuse that's me, sir. Funny. You bought them all up. Yeah, you know? bought so, the whole pack, son. Well, I need more, honey. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> that is hilarious, man. <laughs> it's uh, But it's just so crazy to think that, like, you know, you've definitely seen tournaments for sports games ever since video games came out. Right, you've right. seen Halo tournaments. But you haven't seen tournaments like you're seeing now for Fortnite. Uh, and it's big. And especially the dollar payout. Oh, yeah, straight up. Yes. And, and here's another thing to add to it. Okay, so... On Fortnite, it was one of the first games to ever go cross-platform, bro. Yes. Xbox and PlayStation, I think it was one of, if it wasn't the first. Because you've right. always been able to cross-platform with PC, but never PlayStation and Xbox. Yeah. You know? They got it to where you can play Nintendo it's Switch. Cra- yeah, and the PC and your, phone. Your cell phone. Yeah. yeah, dude, it's crazy. Like, yeah. it's a new level of video game. And, like, it's so crazy because I wish that I would have started streaming video games, like, 10 years ago. Like well, 2010, you know, you know, 20, you know, 2009, 2008, around that era, because 
right then is when it started picking up. Yeah. And it started just, boom, it started escalating. People were streaming. They were getting well, money and stuff. Once like, you're paying kids to win at video games, <laughs> it's hard to preach about not getting playing a job. video games. Yeah, like literally. It's like, how am I going to tell you to get a job when you're making young, money? There was a young man, man that won the three million. He was 16 or 17. Wow. So God. how does his mother tell him to get off those video games? Seriously, man. How? What can she say? Like, you I mean, know? in all... <laughs> like, you're bringing in, it, I mean. It's over with. You, you got, got a $3 million check. Dude, <laughs> literally, even with taxes alone, you're still going to pull two mil of it. Yes. Even if they took a mil of it, dude, you can you're have still, that mil. This is my two. That's y'all. You're in good shape I'm still. Out. You're still in good shape. Never Boom. have to. You could potentially turn that money into everything you ever dreamed of. Yeah. Investing it correctly and doing things with it, building interest yeah. off of it. Well, I'm going to turn it into something, then I'm out. Out, son. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. But yeah, man, it's just so crazy to see, like, the like almost like cult following that it's built yeah. you know like it's seriously like a thing like if you don't know what Fortnite is yeah. you're not you're not plugged in like, yeah you don't I, know what's going on yeah. everybody knows about Fortnite, bro I, I definitely get shot up a lot i get shot <laughs> up a lot <laughs> dude yeah. i haven't played in so long it's been a minute i'd probably get worked yeah. on and, i'd get worked I on i actually get mad at the people that's better than yeah me. Like, for real you know, like Another game that's real on, sweet, man. man, that, like, ate my life for a minute was Smite, dude. I played that game I've never for tried that. hours. It's like League of Legends, but, like, with gods <laughs> and, like, good <laughs> graphics. You know what I mean? Like, it's legit, though, well, man. I mean, and I played it so much. I've had several of my friends uh, poke fun at the graphics of Fortnite. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, I, don't, I mean. I don't really need good graphics to shoot you in your face. <laughs> <laughs> I never I, was I, that kind of. Bro. I just that's wanted, for as long as I can shoot you right in your face. No yeah. lie, dude. Yeah. And like you know, uh, the thing about Fortnite, and that that's a great, that's a valid point because I don't know if you ever played it, but do you remember Fable? Fable, no. It was I like an RPG it. adventure I game. game yes. uh, I never so, played it. Yeah, well, the thing was, dude, the graphics on it were garbage. It was like a car. It looked like Fortnite, all cartoony and yeah. lame. But the game was great. Well, like it was really, really fun and very, car- very interesting. The cartoony aspect of Fortnite doesn't really bother me that yeah. much. I mean, as long as the game's know, good, yeah. dude. Like as long as I can get down on yes. it, and I, you still do, and I no. did forever, bro. Every <laughs> night I was playing Fortnite, dude. Yeah. Seriously, right. you definitely. I've, I've been worked for I've real. Been worked. <laughs> you know, it's crazy, man. <laughs> so let me ask you this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get straight to it. Do you believe in Bigfoot? Um, this is my. I want to answer this. I want to answer this question very honestly. This is my go-to, and I, I want I want to know what people think about my boy Bigfoot. I'm I'm not one of those people that say no, mm-hmm. but I mean, what exactly is what exactly is Bigfoot? Is he supernatural, or are they being are they humans or? Neanderthals or whatever yeah. the well what whatever they, the you know what, scientific name for him is yeah what they think about Bigfoot and here's my thing like if they're if Bigfoot's legit there's not a lot of them left they're very very well, minuscule now are they a species that did not evolve are they survivors I don't know that's what would Bigfoot be would it be well, just a clear-cut animal I mean you're trying I, to say he's a man figure n- is that a man I personally don't think they evolved like Homo sapiens did. Right. I don't think they got the consciousness. I think if they, or maybe they have such a level of consciousness, bro, that they're above us. Maybe well, they're above us and they don't come around us here, because we're the poison. Here's the thing: at this point, we've made them mythical. So yeah, we haven't found any bones. We, we haven't ha- found we, any. For anything. some reason, we can't find hair. You can't yeah. find. You can't find hair. You can't find. It's tough. Excrement. You can't find. It's you tough. know. And, like, I know this sounds real hippie-like, but, like, the only rebuttal I have to that is, like, maybe they burn their dead, you know? Like, I mean... Because we used to burn our dead, you know? So like, Well, I mean, it's just... We still kind of do. Like, we cremate people, so... If they are survivors from thousands of years ago and haven't evolved, mm-hmm. then how can there be no trace? Well, that's the thing where they think that at one point they definitely existed, but they think they were eradicated. It was called right. Gigantopithecus. Right, and right. Okay, like, so you know the scientific yeah, names. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm, you're, you're on it. So, <laughs> so the Gigantopithecus was okay. like a primate 
who was pretty much, I mean, pretty much all around the world, they think. They think, like, but it was different variations. So, like, the Yeti was, like, the cold one, and, like, the, you know, um, North American was, the North American one wasn't as hairy, maybe, and, like, they were pretty much, like, adapted so to their regional, environment. regional. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Like, they were put in, they were different places. If you're going to be in the mountains of the Himalayas, you're you gonna better be have hairy. a lot of fur. Exactly. Yeah. You're going to have to be abominable snow, uh, yeah. you know, abominable snowman, and you know, that's what they think. If you're in the forests of the great it's gonna be northwest. Different. You're gonna be a little sleeker, maybe, yeah. you know, like a more like darker right, problem because right. you can blend in better, you know, if more camouflage. If you're in the redwoods and yeah, and San that's where they think. I mean, they think it's like Pacific uh, Northwest where think, they're at. Think about all these years. I mean, we have that one film. What is that film from San Francisco? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's real like janky. I forget and the name of the gentleman look so that was bad. That, it was just. And that's the clearest look we've, we've ever. Seen. And it was still awful. I mean, everything else looks like I it's a I think the host. one you're talking about, everything. everybody says like it's a dude dressed up. Yeah. Is that the yeah. one you're talking about? Yeah, and bro. And then when they walk, it's just yep. you turn and look. Yeah. You know, it's just. And it's like a diagonal view, yeah. kind of. Like yeah. they're kind of, mm-hmm. they're like side eyed to it. Yeah, dude. I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. And it sucks that that's the only reference that's we the have. Only. And that one's from the 70s. Dude, maybe? it was, yeah, definitely 80s, yeah. 70s. I mean, it's been a minute. Um, like I, said, I forget the name of the photographer yeah, that caught it. And I'm with you too, man. Like, I'm very skeptical about the whole situation. But at the same time, it's like, a, you know, I really want to believe. Right, And right. I want to, like, like, my perspective is if it's legit, I'm going to assume they're on, like, a very enlightened level of life. Like, they're probably in tune with nature, if that makes sense. Right, you know, like right. Native American style. Like, you know, they probably, like... Not worship things, but they are probably very grateful for what they have and very how, grateful for nature. How do you explain the stealth, though? How do you well, explain Well, the thing, that? the only thing, because like I said, dude, a this creature is my, that size makes noise. One hundred percent. You're not a. You're not a eight foot, four hundred ninja. pound ninja. Yeah, you're yeah, not, it's not happening. <laughs> I feel that. So here's my rebuttal to that. In my opinion, I feel like if it is a legitimate thing. They're probably huge. They probably are huge, and it would be hard not to make sound. But I feel like they probably know the patterns of people mm-hmm. who come to thick, thick forests and yeah. stuff. And, like, here's – because some people say, like, they go through portals or something. Like, well, I don't that know was, what people were talking about. Well, that was – people were talking about. Yeah, like, and, uh, I mean, that's nonsense to me. How is that explained? That's how, nonsense. How are explaining that? But in my opinion, I feel like with the stealth thing, I feel like, you know, it, maybe it's like – you know, uh, the uh, Tasmanian tiger, you know, or something along those well, lines I mean, that we just didn't see for 30 years, and all of a sudden you just, see one. It's, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, how have they not fought a grizzly or a, or a bear? Or a, true. Any, I mean, how has it never been? That's true. Are they that in tune with nature that they don't? Well, that's. I mean, because if a, a, a grizzly sees another grizzly, they it's fight. on. Oh, yeah, bro. They <laughs> you fight. know what I'm saying? So they fight. What what is it with the with the Bigfoot? I mean, the thing, the only thing I could think of is one of two things: either a, if they do kill it, it's like they dispose of it. I mean, I mean a creature that size could probably it, kill a bear. Could probably kill. It'd a have bear. a good chance. You know, I maybe mean, not kill all of them, but it would have a good chance. But I man, mean, you're right though, man. The whole ex- thing explaining the power of that creature is hard, but yeah. You know, but the you, whole thing about it is it, it it's weird that we haven't found anything, but like I said, the only explanation I can think of is that they burn their dead and like maybe their their thing is like they know to hide. Like it's like in their instinctual, you know, like mm-hmm. like you know, that part of their brain and you know, in their body. So like they're always they always find each other or something. Yeah. You get what I mean? Like they're very well, like, you know, pack driven if they have like a family. I can say what I say, but I I'm not going to be out in the deep woods by myself without a weapon. <laughs> so regardless if I try to say I believe or not, I'm not going to be where they're at without a weapon, where people say they were this or whatever. This is true. And they, like I said, it always goes back to the Pacific Northwest, yes. like Washington, yes. like I mean, Oregon, always, and Cali. Like, what would make you want to camp? Yeah, bro. Other, I'm like, not doing it. It's crazy. I don't care if people are lying or not. For okay? real. It's crazy, man. You, people have been lying about the Loch Ness for <laughs> I don't know how long. I'm not swimming in that I, lake. I'm not doing yeah. it. Yeah. I personally, that's another one I was going to ask, man. Like, what all Supernatural do you subscribe to? Like, do you subscribe to uh, some of it? Like the Megalodon. Like, I, uh, like, what do you think about that? You think that was legit at one time? Uh, absolutely. 
That's Absolutely. my thing with the Loch Ness Monster. Maybe it's not now. Same thing with the Bigfoot. Maybe right. it's not now, but it definitely existed before. Had yes, to have. before. Had to. Have. Now, to have survived all these years and not be seen. I mean, you got to be bad. You got to yeah. be a yeah. bad mammoth well, gym. And, I mean, the Bigfoots, you could argue the same thing with the Megalodon. Like, mm-hmm. how has a shark of that magnitude not been not seen? Not done something. You know, yeah. I mean. yeah. That's true. That they probably are these, extinct, to be honest. I just, just want to believe. These corny videos where the people try to say a, a, a giant creature bit into a huge whale. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it probably just rotted. Is it on the news? Something. I mean, it's you know, what's going on here? <laughs> That's my thing, no. too. Like, you know, I feel like Bigfoot realistically probably isn't real. And if it is, it's like a rare, rare, rare thing. No. Like, only a couple left. But I definitely feel like it definitely did exist at one time because they found, like, teeth and they found, like, bone structures. That's and they, what I'm wondering. I and mean, they have a picture of, like, a guy standing next to, like, a, rec- uh, you know, a, uh, you know, like a wax statue, I guess, or whatever. And, uh, dude, Of, it, like, life size? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, scale. yeah. Hmm. Uh, it looks terrifying, dude. And Gigantopithecus. Like, huh? Gigantopithecus, yeah, man. It's uh, pretty pretty intense, but this is this is the guy. Oh, this isn't the one comparing to the man, but that's like, you know, natural habitat, chilling, mm-hmm. you know. They said they were red, like orangutan-like. Mm-hmm. This is like an uh, interpretation of them, but that's like nine feet. They were right. like nine to ten feet tall, like true giants, bro. It's just crazy to think about, man, that maybe... You know, a couple thousand years ago, these things were roaming the earth, like straight up. Well, I mean. Very possible. Very possible, man. And another thing, you ever heard of the, the Hobbit people? The creatures they're compared to are still roaming the earth. Yeah, why didn't they make it? That That's a very you good know. question. But the only, re- the only thing I could think of, bro, is like, because they, like one of them, I'm pretty sure... They, like, they think that they found remains in North America, so they think when the land bridge was a thing and all those creatures came over and the humans that came over on the land bridge, they think that's when they might have crossed, but they couldn't survive on this continent, maybe. Right. Like. And what would be the basis of their non-survival? <laughs> well, I don't know. It could have been, I mean, there's a lot of theories about it, but, like, for example, one would be uh, the catastrophes we've had, like the big, like, you know, horrible things that have happened to the Earth. Mm-hmm. We're on the sixth cycle is what they say, scientists or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, when, like, the meteor hit or, like, you know, uh, the cosmos affect our Earth and everything. Not everything, but a lot of things die. So they think it could have been from that. They think, like, that could have been one of the things that experienced, um, you know, a catastrophic event to the Earth that had killed it. Well, it's, you know, same thing with dinosaurs, man. You would think that a creature of that size and that power would always survive. But they got wiped out, too. Well, I mean, did they? We've got I birds. Mean, They're, uh, we've got birds. We've got crocodiles and yeah. alligators. We've sharks. Got, we've got sharks. Sharks are dinosaurs. Dude, man. for real. But, uh, yeah, that, it's really cool, like, the, you know, the uh, correlation, the three-toed, you know, mm-hmm. dinosaur to bird. Like, it's really sweet, man. Like, mm-hmm. it's really cool to look into... Uh, super interesting, but no, nah, man. The uh, the Hobbit people or whatever. These are these were creepy little things, man. Like they were not Homo sapiens. They were uh, Homo florensis, uh, and they were like uh, in like New Guinea and stuff like that. Like that part, like Indonesia, um, you know. And they were said to be like they were like us, you know, but they just weren't as efficient because they were so tiny. You know, they were, like, mm. real, real small people, like, four foot, you know, wow. like, like like pygmies, pretty much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's pretty much what it was. And they say that they preyed on children and, like, babies and stuff, and they would steal from the villages. And that's one theory of why they think they got eradicated, because they think the Homo sapiens just went there and slaughtered them. No, no, that, no. or it was the volcano that's on that, you know, like, a volcano over there. And uh, I believe Southeast Asia, maybe they're like native to that area over there. Uh, but they think they got wiped out by the volcano, or we just slaughtered them because they were stealing our kids. Well, like, I mean. for real. But like, it's really weird, man. They found these skulls of these people, the florist man. Like, you know, they were real tiny. Like, I don't even know. Was it like a gopher or something? Like, <laughs> that's like, that's a weird comparison, man. Yeah. Really weird. 
and like they almost look like look at the size of the skull on that yeah that's dude that's small, tiny yeah. you know that's tiny almost childlike literally and that's what they think is were these hobbit people man and like you know it kind of goes along with the thing where like people say that you know we came from primates and like we did to a degree i feel like i feel like we came from a species that w- resembled a you know maybe a chimpanzee or some type of you know monkey but yeah. i don't think it was like straight up right, we mean... came from a monkey i don't i don't think that's legit <laughs> like i think that's false in my opinion you know from what i've read and stuff uh, a guy william von hoppel he talks about uh you know, where we came from, we started in Africa, um, and pretty much, like, that's the motherland for all people. That's where the human race is said to be started, at the top of Africa, like ancient Babylon, you know, like uh, Libya, Egypt, uh, and then the Middle East right there. Right. Like, that area was supposed to be the beginning of it or whatever. The dawn. Um, right. And they also think that some, maybe some people were down in the middle as well, and then they migrated to the desert for some reason, but they don't know why. But we started in the jungle, and he thinks, like, that's why early man, they believe to be built up and down instead of lateral how we're built. Like, our pecs go out, you know? And, like, if you look at a monkey, they their pecs go up. Like, because right. they're always up. Like, they're always mm-hmm. using, you know, their upper body in a Yeah, physically, up and down. that's the way they're... That's using how they're, their bodies. Exactly. We're side to side. That's right. how we live now. So mm-hmm. they think that evolution had, uh, you know, a big play in that, you know, and like because we got out of the jungle and went to the desert, that's when over time evolution had built us differently. Mm-hmm. Really crazy, man. That, that guy's really brilliant. A lot really of interesting brilliant. theories. A lot he, of interesting he's brilliant, theories. dude. Like he's got a lot of great theories, man. And that, that's all they are at the end of the day. It's just ideology. It's, you can't prove any of it. You know, it's just thoughts, but it's. I think it's really interesting to have an open mind to things, you know, and to be receptible to things that potentially could be true. Right. I mean, that's that makes sense. It really does. When you look at a monkey, like I said, their pecs are built a certain way. That's what they think early man looked like. That's why they. Can, that's why there's the comparison. You know, that's mm-hmm. that's one of the reasons. And also, um, do you know why they say that our brains grew quadruple in size, like over like a a thousand or no, maybe it's like 500,000 or like a million years or something like a pretty quick like you know blink in history of you know the universe or whatever if we look at it like that but our brains quadrupled in size because we started cooking our protein we started cooking our meat and like eating that and getting that nutrition from that you know it built us to be bigger and like it built us our brains to wow. not like overnight you know, like you, you eat a deer and then you you know you yeah. got a bigger brain. No. It's not like that, but like <laughs> evolution. And think about it, dude. Think about dudes that are built like LeBron James. That guy is not human. He he had great yeah. genetics and great nutrition, and that's how it goes. That is evolution of nutrition over years and years and years of people who breed into, like I said, keeping the good genetics of big people, dude. Like. I'll guarantee if you go back and look at all of his ancestors, they were probably very, very <laughs> tall and very, very big guys. You know what I mean? And maybe women as well, you know? But, like, those genetics, they say, come from, you know, like I said, the quadruple in the brain, being a bigger person, being muscular, because everybody has a body type. Mm-hmm. And, like, some people are just literally built like Greek gods. They think right. it's because the nutritional uh, gene and that genetic was mm-hmm. passed on, you right. know? And it's just like... It's encoded in your DNA. Naturally, it's yeah, natural. It's natural. It's natural. You don't have to try. So, like, it, it's a really cool theory, man. And, like, you should definitely check him out. Anybody who hasn't checked out his stuff, he's a brilliant individual. Uh, a lot of cool stuff. He, he references a lot of studies that scientists do, like, at different colleges and different, you know, uh, you know, uh, IT schools right. or, you know, whatever. You know, big corporations that are doing big things, you know, scientists that are brilliant. Um, <laughs> but he's, People being brilliant. Seriously, man, he's great. Like, all around, he's a, like I said, he's a psychologist out of, like, New York or New Jersey maybe. Um, but he's really cool, man. He's right. a real smart guy. Definitely got to check him out. Uh, and the next thing I want to talk about was, it kind of goes along with this, the things we were just talking about kind of disproves, like, religion to a degree. You know what I mean? Wow, like, religion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, the thing Whoa. is... 
<laughs> what have it's I gotten serious, into here? Man. It's getting serious. Gotta get a drink of water, man. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, like it kind of, not disproves, but it kind of, it kind of puts a little damper on religion if you think about it, you know? Because Science versus religion. Exactly. That's what it comes Basically. down to. My thing is, I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. I feel like the true teachings of Christ were legit. And most people don't even know, but the only difference between Christianity and Muslim is the son of a slave and the son of a wife. Abraham's wife gave birth to Isaac, and Abraham's slave gave birth to Ishmael, who went on to create the Muslim faith. Isaac went on to obviously, you know, further the Christian the Christianity faith. So that's the only difference. And people are over here; they're allowing us to be divided and allowing us to be labeled and segregated further. Mm-hmm. All because of a name that people were putting on things, you know, and it's not really that much of a difference. Like, granted, there is extreme Christians who were murdering people who would not um, obey with their religion. That's truth. That's fact. For those of you who don't know that, I'm sorry. I have to be the bearer of bad news. And it's the same exact way with the Muslim faith. They have slaughtered people for not, uh, you know, going to their religion. But in my opinion, the true teachings of Christ were legit. You know, like wow. keeping your moral compass legit. I feel like that's a good thing. You know, it's a, like it's it's we need more great kind way to people. keep you centered. You know? Yeah, we need more good people in the world. Right. We don't need a bunch of bad people. We need good. You know, m- you know, people have good morals, man. Yes. But at the same time, people have taken it and manipulated it so hard to bring up your fellow man. That's what. Yeah, that's what it's know, supposed to be. You're supposed to help each other yeah. and be community driven. You know, like. And Bill Burr, he said it best, man. Like, you know, him and Joe Rogan were talking, and, like, pretty much they said, like, you know, if you make the right cult, I'll come to it. <laughs> you know? Like, if, I mean, honestly. <laughs> straight up, if you make a good enough cult, I will come. Right. I agree with that. If you have a church that's going out and helping the homeless, like, legitimately not filming it, and we're actually doing it, and we're helping children, and we, we just created a youth, uh, youth center, or we're doing, you know, God's work legit, dude, sign me up. But that's not typically how it goes mm-hmm. seven <laughs> out of ten. You know, that's not how it goes. And I'm not trying yeah, to. Th- that's just the truth of it. Yeah, I'm not trying to get too crazy about it because I don't want people to be discouraged. But at the same time, you got to realize that in life, if you don't have an open mind, you know, are you really living? You know, like, are you really mm-hmm. living? Like, are you living your best life by not being open to things and change? It's like, dude. I can't stand, I can't stand most white men over the age of 40 because they are the most stubborn people. They won't listen. They think they know it all, dude, and I can't stand Some of it. which I'm friends I, with. Bro, me too. I know some great, stubborn, 40-year-old white men who just won't listen to anything you have to say. It's horrible, man. They don't have time. They don't have time because they know it already. They don't have time, yeah. Dude, it's crazy. And, like, I hate that. And I'm glad that our generations are kind of switching now. You know, because you got, you know, we are dumbed down more to a degree. But there's a lot more people who are taking things serious now. Yeah. You know, and people are trying to wake themselves up now more than they have in a long time, I feel like. You know I mean? I feel like there's more people awake now and enlightened than there was. At a certain point. (laughs) You wake, you go waking up too much. Your, your feelings gonna get hurt on the other side, dude. That's serious. So, that's that's that's. So if you've been asleep, keep your ass halfway asleep. <laughs> that is a valid point. That's a valid point, man. And that's the thing. Like you got to find that weird balance of like how much do people really need to know to help the cause right. of not being brainwashed? Mm-hmm. You know how much do you really tell them? Do you take them all the way down the rabbit hole? Do you drag them or do you ease it in and let them know like, hey, this is what's going on? Yeah. I don't know. You got to find that balance, man. Well, I mean. There's times you have to look at young men, young women, and, mm-hmm. and you have to wonder, I mean, how haven't you fallen down more? 100%. You know, you have, to, the, you have to take care of yourself in a certain way. You can't just, yeah. you can't be reckless. Yeah. You know? And, the, I mean, the only way to change the world is to instill knowledge into the youth. Right. Give right. them all to. the facts. Give them honesty. Yeah. Don't hide things from them. Tell them about history. Right. And that's my whole thing with, like, people trying to erase history, man. Like, well, you can't do that. In my opinion, I feel like for all for all things that have happened in our history, we need to know it all. 
Like, we need to know it all. That's just how it goes, the well, good and the bad. Youth nowadays, they have YouTube, so. Yeah. They 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 think they know more than you because they watch a the YouTube video. Read and Google, you know. You so. know? Mm-hmm. And you're absolutely right, man. But it's just sad because, you know, there people are wanting to take away from yeah. things to put other things in place. It's like, you man, if, if. There's not a lot of things in life you can just watch a YouTube tutorial. Yeah. And, you got to learn, and man. You know it. You have to experience it, yes. For sure. You know, YouTube might teach you how to make a pipe bomb, but, you know, you might need a book, you know too. What I'm saying? You, know? you, just... you might need to go to the library, you know, the anarchist book. You know, I'm just playing yeah. kids. Don't do this at home. Come on now. I'm just talking heat. I'm here with my boy. It's episode 34. Come yes. on, man. Um, but, no, like I said, you know, I feel like spreading knowledge to the youth helps tremendously when you're trying to make a change in the world. It, you can't do it by forcing people. You can't force people to do things, man. Because if you try to force people, it, it it you're doing yourself a disservice, I feel like. Well, there are powerful organizations out there that believe they can force you. You're absolutely right. You are you know, 100% right, man. Gotta, and that's my next thing I'm going to come to. You've got to think of what, who has control. You <laughs> need to check out The Family on Netflix. Great documentary. About four or five episodes, maybe 42 minutes apiece mm-hmm. for the episode. Pretty short watch. You can knock it out. You know, it's pretty quick. But, man, you're going to know most of it, as I did, but you're going to learn some stuff from it, too. Like, <laughs> dude, it's crazy. Back to the old 40-year-old white men. Back to the 40-year-old white men. One of these white men has been involved in politics, but he doesn't have a job in politics since the Eisenhower era. His name's Doug Coe. And, he, and it shows clips and documentary. So what yeah, exactly just, has he been doing? Bro, some some witch doctor stuff. I don't know what this guy's doing. So allegedly they think he's straight up pushing Christianity on people to influence world leaders, and he has been doing this since the 50s. I mean, But nobody knows. He doesn't have a job in the government. He's not a government official at all. He's just a guy who knows all the politicians. And they show clips. It's like George Bush, Obama, Trump, Clinton, mm-hmm. George H.W., uh, Eisenhower, uh, you name it, bro. Reagan, mm-hmm. all these people, bro. And they're like, yeah, I just want to, you know, give a thanks to my buddy Doug Coe and blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, dude, nobody even knew who this guy was. He is just a random puppet master pulling the strings, putting some Jesus stuff in these guys' mind. But it might be, it's it's speculation. It's a legend. He's dead now, actually. That's probably why the documentary came out, because wow. he's dead now. Um, But it's alleged, you know, it's like, Pretty much what they think is like the prayer breakfast and all that stuff were fronts to rub elbows with the right people to build connections in the world and to take like make allies in the world and push Christianity on them and tell them to use it as a front as well. Like a front. Because it's supposed to be like, dude, these are evil people who are doing this, you know? And like pretty much what they're saying is like, you know, God will judge you. I won't. So you can do what you want. <laughs> I will never judge you because I'm not God. So you can go rape women or do oh, wow. horrible things to the world and, you know, genocide. But as long as, you know, you're true to God, you're okay. So that's like summarizing it. But you need to check it out, man. I it's mean, it's good. It could, sometimes it could be used as a powerful tool. Very, very powerful. For control. Oh, dude, these guys yeah. made millions off of it from what the documentary says. You know, it's it's a very powerful thing that they've been doing since the 50s. And, uh, dude, if you watch, you'll see the clips whenever he's preaching about stuff. And, uh, dude, he'll be, t- he, he, like, references, like, Hitler a lot and, like, Mussolini wow. and, like, Bashir and Gaddafi and, like, all these, like, all these war criminals, dude. Like, all these people who've, you know, done horrible things to their country. Straight Leaders, up dictators, dictators bro. Yeah. It's tr- creating covenants, bro. Like, that's what he's about. He wanted to create that loyalty. He compared that loyalty to what he wanted. I want somebody to go out and die for me. The, well, you those know? type of dictators use religion yeah. as a tool. Either no religion or religion. It's like right. a, they use they can use mm-hmm. both because Russia used no religion. Right. Like you are atheist. We are an atheist, communist um, country. They used to go into people's apartments or houses 3 o'clock in the morning just to look for a Bible. If they found it, they'd beat you in your house, take you to jail. Wow. Take you to jail. One of the guys talks about it who was from Russia who's been a Christian his whole life. Because there's two sides on it. They got, like, the Doug Coe fans who are protecting him and, like, defending him, trying to, like, make everything cool. And then you got the guys who were like, nah, this guy's a bad guy. Like, he's doing some bad stuff. You know, it's uh, 
Hmm. It's something else, man. Yeah, it really yeah. is. But yeah, guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Once again, www.facebook.com underdog mobile food truck. Yes. Go make sure to give them a like. This has been a great episode, episode 34. Make sure to share this. And also, check out the new shirt and the tank top I just dropped on the website mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, we need that merch out there Got to get that merch, baby. Um, mm-hmm. And also, anybody who wants to be involved in the sponsorship opportunity, inbox me, email me at therealnugsb at gmail.com. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. Thanks for being on, bro. I really appreciate it, Thank man. you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure, dude, always. Thank you and, for uh, you know... Like I said, by the end, by winter or before winter hits, they should be back out. If not, early spring. So you yes. guys are gonna have to go mess with my people with a go whole some, new look. Absolutely, it's gonna be awesome. You guys gonna get some great food. Uh, I'll let everybody know the day we're gonna go live, so people can come over, you right. know, and you know, get some pictures. We'll do whatever, you know. Yeah. So it's been a blessed day. I appreciate you guys. Sit down Peace. and chop it up with Nugsby. <laughs> Y'all be good. <laughs>